The committee will come to order. The chairman notes the presence of a quorum, which under committee rule 3E is two members. The Subcommittee on Energy and Mineral Resources is meeting today to hear testimony on an oversight hearing titled, American Energy Jobs, Opportunities for Women and Minorities. Under Committee Rule 4F, opening statements are limited to the chairman and ranking member of the subcommittee. However, I ask unanimous consent to include any other member's opening statement in the hearing record if submitted to the clerk by close of business today. Hearing no objection, so ordered. I also ask unanimous consent that the gentlelady from Texas, Ms. Sheila Jackson Lee, be allowed to participate in today's hearing upon her arrival. Hearing no objection, so ordered. I now recognize myself for five minutes. Today we continue this subcommittee's focus on the many employment opportunities in America's energy sector and will specifically examine opportunities for women and minorities. This committee has long advocated an all of the above energy strategy for our nation advancing policies that seek to diversify our nation's energy portfolio while also recognizing and providing for the current energy needs of American citizens. Along with that position, we have also advocated for all of the jobs that come with that pro-growth agenda. But an often overlooked and very interesting and important aspect of the projected job growth is the diverse sectors of our population that benefit from American energy production. A recent study conducted by IHS for the American Petroleum Institute released last month found significant job potential for women and minorities. More specifically, the study found that under a pro-development scenario, America's energy industry could create up to 1.3 million new jobs by 2030. Of these 1.3 million jobs, almost 408,000 positions, or roughly one-third of those jobs, are projected to be held by African American and Hispanic workers. This report points to minority employment opportunities, which would be rising from a baseline of one quarter of all jobs in 2010 to one third of all jobs by 2030. The report also estimated that roughly 185,000 new jobs would be filled by women. This should not be overlooked given that in last week's jobs report, the unemployment rate for women increased to 6.2% and was over 12% for African Americans. Given that jobs in the energy sector are proven to have wages that are significantly higher than any other sectors of our economy, this report is only further proof that fostering energy production in our country, especially on federal lands, generates undeniable employment opportunities. The witnesses here today can speak directly to their experiences in this important sector of our economy. I would hope the stories that they share of their personal experiences in the energy and mineral development industries only inspires others to enter this important sector of our economy. I would also hope that their stories serve to inspire my colleagues in Congress to stand behind the laudable goal of increasing American energy production. While business is currently booming on private lands, there is always more we can do to foster this job growth on federal lands, to lower prices for American families, generate economic activity on our shores, and further increase our national security for all Americans. I now recognize the ranking member for his opening statement.